Can you be World 1 while only riding Plessy in Super Mario 3D World? So Plessy is our surf buddy throughout the game. Whether surfing across water or land, this dinosaur has our back. But Plessy is only available in a few levels throughout the game. So what if we added Plessy to the start of every level in World 1? How would that play out exactly? Well, let's find out. Real fast before diving in, I did want to let you all know that the full version of my video game just released and it's 100% free. Every single one of you watching has allowed me to make a living breaking video games and diving into their lore and mysteries. And for that, I'll always be super thankful. My life has changed, and I thought a game would be the perfect way to say thanks. My game Zardy's Maze just released completely free on Steam for both PC and Mac. It's a spooky challenge game that graphically looks like it belongs on the Nintendo 64. Grab your axe and flashlight and head into the mysterious corn maze. You need to cut down the giant, strange plants that have started growing there, but just be careful of what lurks in the dark. In addition to the main mode, you'll now find a fully customizable challenge mode that features 7 difficult challenges and the option to create your own. I'd love for you guys to check it out. And if you enjoyed the game, consider leaving me a review on Steam because it'll help my game grow. I won't kid you, the game is hard. But if you master the mechanics, you'll overcome the challenge. If you don't like spooky games, then please send it to your favorite horror game content creator who does. Drop them a comment and let them know you'd like to see them tackle Zardy's Maze. You'd be helping me out a ton, as there's a lot of mysteries to be unraveled and a lot of challenges to be completed. Thanks again for your support, and I really hope you all enjoy my game. But let's get back to trying to guide Plessy through this absurd challenge. So before climbing aboard our insane slip and slide, there's a few things I should probably mention first. So Plessy is normally only available in levels ahead directly straight. This means even if the players slam on the brakes, they are going to move forward. This also limits Plessy's movement to 180 degrees from their spawning point. Whatever direction they are spawned at will determine the angle and mobility options we will have. There are a few techniques we'll be using to get through these levels, but I figured I'd go over them as they occur. Lastly, levels are deemed completed if we can make it to the final area right before the flag. Lots of stages typically have a pipe or warp that take you to the flag area, and in a normal Plessy stage, you will have departed Plessy at that point. So those same rules apply here. Onwards to Super Bell Hill. Our goal is just to reach the end of the level, mind you. Now, I'm going to be honest. I wasn't entirely sure how all this was going to go. This is just a dumb idea I came up with. So let's see what's doable and what isn't. Getting the angle right for old Plus Plus was a nightmare, and Luigi died over and over again. Plus he has his big run and jump too, so if you aren't far back enough, you're screwed as well. The first hurdle we come across in Super Bell Hill is an invisible wall that Plessy can cross. It's a bit dangerous to navigate, but there is a way around. It's very easy to die though. You essentially need to surf up top to avoid the impassable barrier, and then you can continue on. We leap over a cliff, climb a small staircase, and then hit another invisible wall. So luckily, if we utilize the clear pipe on the left, we can just get over top of this wall to continue on. Once we are past, we want to ride the clear pipe out over the cliff so we can make the jump over to the next section of the level. Good thing Luigi's got some boat insurance, because that fall caused Plessy some major internal bleeding. She don't quite handle like she used to. At this point, it's smooth sailing, and we make it to the final wall before the flagpole. Luigi pops off and we snag a flag. Onward to Koopa Trooper Cave, and onward to the run already being over. There's pipe transitions all over this place, so I clearly didn't think this through. However, we still have the other levels to attempt, and none of them have closed off areas like this. So let's press on. We're sticking to the main stages for this run simply because enemy fights are pointless, since Plessy can only deal damage to certain enemies. So we pop over to World 1-3 for Mount Beanpole. Heading into this level, I was feeling pretty good. It's a vertical level, so Plessy's forward movement is canceled out. There's also a lot of platforms and other objects that act as stepping stones for a belly flopping weirdo. We basically zigzag up the mountain while flailing like a wacky, waving, inflatable tube man struggling for dear life. But Luigi's got the reins, and he's not giving up. The brick block jump is a bit tough because of how high it is, but we can make it with some speed. Belly flop after belly flop, we eventually reach the bridge, only to fly over the piranha plant and hurtle to our death. Okay, so Luigi gets off a little earlier this time, and we reach the flagpole. World 1-4 is normally a plusy level, so uh, let's give it the Mario 64 reverse water treatment and go through this on foot. Without Plessy, this level drags on. You can walk in the water like it is ground, so it's a bit weird. The level is so massive that I didn't think I'd make it to the end without more speed. So I sent Luigi to the Shadow Realm and used Monster Reborn to bring him back as a cat. With the cat dive and swipe, I was able to gain momentum and speed up the entire process until I got to the end. I ran the clock pretty hard still, but I was able to make it to the end and clear the stage. Now, World 1-5 is tricky, so if you hop on Plessy right away, you are essentially done for. 
Plus he can't hit the switches to remove the doors, so he just squirm like a worm against his firm power. So in order to clear this stage, you have to activate all the platforms with Ouija, and then walk back to Plessy and start your engine. The platforming for the first part of the level isn't too terrible, and then we find ourselves in the second half. You need the checkpoint because you'll find yourself unable to part from your doomed water ski as it gets stuck against the door waiting to fall to its doom. When Luigi is reborn a new man, we can move forward and unlock all the doors in the level before getting behind the wheel again. Now we can ride Plessy to the top of the stage. Honestly, I was worried that Plessy wasn't going to be able to make some of these jumps, but with some speed, we can get lucky and get stuck on the ledge allowing us to slip up. And with that, we have come to the pipe that clears the stage. Another level under Luigi's belt. But now we have Bowser's Castle, and this is the level that I probably died at the most. Determining the angle that Plessy should be at was a lot of trial and error, because the level continually moves backwards at a 45 degree angle, and then sometimes straight back. Not only that, but moving fast on Plessy with a side-scrolling camera can be rough, because you can't see what is coming until you learn the path of the level. You can either go on top of the thwomps to make it across the middle section, or you can slow your roll and take the more scenic route. But the final part of this level is a bit rough to nail. I died here a lot, because I was at the maximum angle for the 180 degrees that Plessy allows. Not only that, but the rock wall is too high and Plessy can't hit the bombs to break it open. But Plessy has a hidden technique that is super helpful. And in order to do it, you need to initiate a jump at the same time you hit a wall decently hard. Bumping a wall bops you backwards a bit, but when combined with a jump, it allows you to bypass the normal jump height quite a bit. And once we pass this part, we're now up against Bowser. So the Bowser fight is weird because I was worried activating the car cutscene was going to wipe the map and essentially send Plessy to the next dimension. So I tried jumping on Plessy on the staircase, but then I realized nobody ever taught Plessy how to use stairs. So Plessy just gave up and hurtled us into the great beyond. Except we couldn't die because there wasn't a death barrier. Luigi and Plessy fell for all of eternity. In an alternative timeline, this time I boarded my vessel right as the cutscene took place. So as soon as Bowser pulled up on his Rolls Royce, I pulled up on my scooter. Plessy pretty much can't do anything in this fight. You just rub up against Bowser's car and hope for the best. If you jump at the right time, you can get on top of Bowser's car though, which is pretty neat. Bowser doesn't know how to respond and just stops moving. And you eventually come to the warp section that has no warp. And, uh, that's it. The warp doesn't spawn because Bowser isn't there, and we can't hurt Bowser anyways, so it's pointless. Plessy, you let me down. Luigi gave his blood for you. So all in all, we can clear a majority of the levels, just not level 2 in the final Bowser fight. Before piecing out, consider checking out my game Zardy's Maze in the description below. Give it a play yourself, or do me a huge favor and send it to your favorite horror content creator on YouTube. I'd greatly appreciate it. But I hope you enjoyed this silly challenge, and I'll see you all again in my next video. Cheers.